Welcome to Module 8, Lesson 2, Building an Online Teacher Portfolio. In this lesson, we will discuss online portfolio planning, strategies for preparing and editing portfolio items, website creation tools, and tips for finalizing your portfolio. Let's begin. As you compile evidence of your teaching background, skills, and accomplishments to create a well-rounded portfolio, you may wish to select the best and most representative components and make them publicly accessible in an online teacher portfolio. This is an optional step, but one that could have benefits when applying for jobs or establishing your presence as a professional in the field. Before you start, it helps to view sample online portfolios to see what's been done and to give you ideas. You can find links to a number of portfolio examples on the TIPS website and in the Dig Deeper resources for the TED-Ed lesson associated with this video. When reviewing the sample portfolios, think of the following. How are they organized and presented? What do you like or find effective? What was distracting or confusing? Take notes. They can help you begin to visualize and formulate what your online portfolio will eventually look like. Next, map out your portfolio website. What sections will you have and what will be contained in them? How will users navigate around your site? Top navigation, side navigation? Will it be intuitive and easy for users to find what they are looking for? Sketching this out in advance can help you determine an appropriate website template to match your content, organization, and design. Next, select what content to include in your online teacher portfolio. Key items you'll want to include are a picture and professional bio statement about yourself, your philosophy of teaching statement, your CV, and of course, a way to contact you, such as through a Contact Me webpage. To prevent spam, don't list your email address online. Adding in sample materials from your teaching and quotes or summaries from your evaluations will really help create a fuller picture of you as an educator and show what you can do. You will notice that cover letter samples are not listed here. Since those are specific for a particular job application, they are not appropriate for an online portfolio site. Items included should be general in nature. When preparing your online portfolio, you should keep two things in mind, your audience and privacy concerns. Your online portfolio will be publicly accessible. So anyone, from a potential employer, to a colleague, to a student, to a stranger surfing the web, may be viewing it. Definitely include aspects of your professional training, work, and philosophy, but don't include content that is sensitive or that you would feel uncomfortable sharing with the general public. In addition, if you will be including samples of student work or quotes from evaluation forms, make sure you have their written permission. Follow any rules on sharing set by your institution and anonymize them to protect privacy unless given permission otherwise. Okay, now for some tips and suggestions for particular online portfolio items. A professional picture and an accompanying bio statement are typically the first items a visitor to your online portfolio will see or seek out. As such, many choose to display them on their portfolio homepage, so they are front and center. Others create an About Me page instead and use the home page to showcase, for example, an image or favorite quote that captures the focus or theme of the portfolio. Bio statements are often brief, a couple paragraphs at most, and typically focus on your professional background and highlights of your work experience and accomplishments. Some people also choose to include a sentence or two about their personal interests, such as hobbies, to help create a fuller picture. Given the general nature of online portfolios, for CVs, it is best to work from your master version. However, make sure to remove your personal address, phone number, and email address to prevent spam or unwanted contacts. Remember, anything on your portfolio will be public. 
Also, you may wish to remove or edit certain parts of your online CV that are not crucial to include publicly. For example, test scores, GPA, unrelated work experience. In terms of displaying the CV information, some educators prefer to keep everything in an easily downloadable PDF file, while others convert the major sections of their CV into sections on their website. For example, subpages for work experience, publications, presentations, awards and honors, skills, and so forth. To help visitors contact you, you may wish to set up a contact me form on your website if your web builder contains templates for them. This will again keep your email address private and help reduce potential spam messages. Be sure to test the form function from various email servers while using this function to make sure it works properly. Regarding teaching material samples, here are some tips and reminders. Sharing course syllabi can be a good strategy to demonstrate the range of content you've taught. However, we caution you not to include a fully detailed course syllabus with schedules, assignments, etc. It is sad to say, but there have been cases where unscrupulous educators have snatched ready-made syllabi from others, passing it off as their own. Don't let others take advantage of your hard work in developing a course. Just share a partial syllabus with general information, for example, course overview, learning outcomes, grading, and class policies, but not the day-to-day -day specifics of the class. Keep your full syllabi in your private portfolio. If you will be sharing language activity write-ups, make sure there aren't any copyright issues for images or materials used. And of course, for anything that involves items from students, Make sure you have permission and respect privacy. Finally, once you've gathered your online portfolio item candidates together, keep in mind the following. First, select a representative sample to demonstrate the breadth and depth of your skills and experience. An online portfolio will not display everything in your master portfolio. Think instead of showing your greatest hits. Second, make sure to add context and reflective comments to the portfolio items you include. For example, if you post a video clip of your teaching, set the scene and describe what you are trying to demonstrate in the clip so the reader understands your reasons for including it. If you post evaluation excerpts, especially if they may be negative, comment on what you learned from them or how you improved. Help guide the reader to best interpret what you are trying to get across. Finally, as we have often said, your philosophy of teaching is the heart of your portfolio, so make sure to select items that connect to it or show it in action. Remember, a teacher portfolio helps the viewer better understand who you are as a teacher and what you strive for. For website design, as already discussed in Module 1, Lesson 2, there are a wide variety of free web creation sites available, including Weebly, Wix, WordPress, Google Sites, and Blogger, that are easy to use and come with an array of ready-made web page templates or themes to use. Recently, there have also been paid companies like PortfolioGen, that are specifically designed to help easily create professional online portfolios and come with a monthly or annual subscription fee. Finally, for those of you on the professor track, you may want to consider setting up an academia.edu account and web page. With both free and paid options, academia.edu helps researchers easily share their papers and research with colleagues. And as discussed in Module 1, it's also a good idea to set up a LinkedIn account and web page when you're starting your job hunting. So you'll have multiple ways of getting the word out about your background, experience, and skills. Once your online portfolio is designed, built, and complete, here are some final suggestions to consider. Have a colleague or friend beta test your site. Get feedback on the look readability, 
ease of navigation, and content of your online portfolio. They may give you good insights or suggestions for improving your online portfolio. Also, make sure not to share the portfolio URL with employers until it's ready for public viewing. If you, for example, share it in your cover letter and the website is still under construction, it may not create a good impression. Once your portfolio is complete, it may be tempting to just put it aside as done. But remember to update the contents regularly to reflect your burgeoning work experience, new courses or materials you've created, shifts in your teaching philosophy, and so forth. Set a regular period, for example, summer break, when you can easily review your online portfolio content and make updates. Finally, some educators use their online portfolio as a resource site, a contribution to the profession. They archive many of their teaching activities, materials, and publications so colleagues can freely use them, and they provide lists of helpful links. Some even have blog entries to chronicle their thoughts and growth as a language professional. Just some things to consider. Next up, test what you've learned in the Think section. Check out the Dig Deeper resources for even more strategies and tips, as well as online portfolio samples. In the Discuss section, respond to the following prompt. How do you think an online teacher portfolio might be valuable to have, and do you plan to create one in the future? Any concerns? Finally, please take our brief survey listed with this lesson to give us feedback on our series of tips, TED-Ed videos, and lessons. And congratulations! You've made it through the final official lesson. You've completed all eight modules and have learned a wide variety of strategies and tips for applying for that job you want to get and putting together a great teacher portfolio. In the process, you have reflected on your teaching beliefs, experience, and skills, collecting together documentation that shows it in action. Bravo! The next lesson, Module 8, Lesson 3, is only for those interested in earning the TIPS Digital Badge and getting some additional help. If you are just going through the TED-Ed lessons as a course of self-study, this is your final stop. Thank you for going on this journey with us. Mahalo and aloha.